Good morning, Amina. Welcome to another SEO's Getting Coffee. And good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, how are you, Amina? I'm good. I'm good. 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 Good morning. Ready with my coffee? Yeah. Do you have a coffee? No, I have water again. Oh I my god! Do have god. water again? Honestly, I'm sorry. We should. I'm sorry. We should. We should rename this into uh, SEO's having a drink. Having, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Having a at cup least of then, something. At least cup then, of something. Cup of something, because then at least we could potentially sprinkle in some alcoholic <laughs> beverage. Oh, Especially yeah. well. after this week in the SEO world. Um, but never mind, we won't go into that. Um, today we're going to be talking about crawling, I believe. Um, and my first question to you, Amina, is crawling boring? Well, for me, it's not boring. For you, considering our chat about whether we're talking about this or not today, <laughs> I think for you it might be a bit boring. No, I'm, However, I'm... I think crawling is a really exciting topic. <laughs> yeah, I, I am. I am just, uh, you know, pl playing a bit of devil, devil's advocate here, I guess. Um, but yeah, I think first of all, let's. Um, it, it's it's one of those very dry topics, isn't it? So let's. But let's try and spice it up a little bit and kind of, you know. Um, yeah, get enthusiastic about it. Maybe more so myself rather than you. Um, but yeah, crawling. Um, what is crawling? Well, I would define it as um, how search engines, you know, discover the content of your website. Um, is there anything you'd like to add into the definition of crawling, Amina? No, I mean, that's the that's really the gist. It's crawling is basically the the process that a bot. Uh, yes, I didn't mention discover, the bots. Yes, yes. Yeah, to discover your website, so it's it's <clears> as simple <throat> as that, which is really really important, even though for some people it might be boring. <laughs> yes, it is very very important because if the bots don't crawl your site, then you're not going to get your site indexed because no no well they can't find anything of your site. So yeah. Yeah, and okay. you won't get your just just to make clear because one of the things that people are really obsessed with is, you know, the third element of the holy trinity of SEO, which is ranking. So everybody is wondering about ranking when actually there's two other processes that happen as well that you should be looking at because it's all connected and it all impacts yeah. each other. So <clears throat> crawling yeah. is important. Exactly. So I think the first thing that we could get into really then is probably uh, crawl budget. Um, because I think that's that's something that's often talked about and goes hand in hand when anybody opens a conversation about crawling. Um, so, yeah, crawl budget. And is crawl budget something that we should be worried about? Well, you know, like 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 it's the case with everything in SEO, it really depends. Um, but in general, I think there is a big um, overestimation around uh, what, why this is important. So basically your crawl budget is the number of pages search engine will crawl on your website in a specific time frame. yeah? So you get basically a budget assigned to you. Um, and there's this kind of idea that once you hit your budget, the crawlers are no longer like visiting your website that often and, and you, you know you've kind of hit your budget the where it starts being um, misinformation a little bit is where does this apply in my experience um not many sites actually hit the crawl budget and for most sites you don't have to worry about it at all uh, if you look at google's documentation it really clearly says that this is mostly for large sites so we're talking about millions of unique pages here um, and one of the other things that you need to think about is how much you update your content. So for a really big site, if you're moderately updating, um, for example, a week, uh, every week you do something new, you might want to think about your crawling budget. The same with like medium sun sites, like 10,000 plus pages, um, where uh, you are updating a lot. So let's let's take, for example, news news websites, their content is updated daily or even hourly, and they should be looking at their crawl budget as well. Mm. And then so, the third one, wait, there's the third one that is a little bit 
you know, that's the murky one, is that Google basically says those websites who have a lot of pages that are stuck in this discovered but currently not indexed bit of your console. Um, now, this is where it becomes a little bit murky because you can have pages that are stuck in there. But most of the time, what I've seen, it's not the crawl, crawling, you know, it's not, it's not the crawl budget that's causing it. It's other things with crawling, other issues that, that appear. Okay. So from, from that, then really kind of to summarize is that, you know, crawl budget is something that maybe medium to large sites should really be kind of having, you know, uh, it should be kind of a regular part of their, their SEO discussions and, 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 you know, considerations and, um, strategy, whereas smaller sites don't really need to be worrying about crawl budget at all. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, but they, you need they, to worry about crawling. Yeah. You need to worry about crawling, but not worry about crawl budget if you're a small site, but you might want to have it and start to consider it when you get to a medium or if not large site, but also it also depends on the type of site. Like you mentioned is that, you know, if you are a news publisher and like you say, if you are updating content at a super fast rate and you're producing new content at a super fast rate, then obviously it's going to be something that's going to be a lot more applicable um, yeah. to you compared to say, <laughs> a B2B service website that produces one new page a month or a week or whatever, right? So Yeah, exactly. Okay. And and we're talking about big like e-commerce is a really good example because e-commerce has, you know, you have small e online shops, but a lot of like the medium ones very quickly come very quickly scale up and grow. And because these systems they have this like <sighs> some features that might already be not like like Shopify, for example, not already mm -hmm. be um, in line with what you want to do with your crawling. You have these situations where it's been set up incorrectly and it's creating duplicates and things like that, uh, which very quickly turns into a problem if you're an e-commerce website, you know, with yeah. loads and loads of products. So, Yeah, and it quite nicely goes on actually to... Um internal linking i think really um because i think i mean that's that's the main thing is that if you think about and you kind of you know if you wanted to visualize um a little uh bot a little spider that's crawling around your website how does that spider navigate right that that spider that little bot that goes around your website how does it how does it get from one page to the to the next well you need to give it as many pathways and opportunities to kind of discover different pieces of content on your site right so how do you do that internal linking so it's kind of i think one of the things that you know often comes up which you know kind of really helps obviously crawling is uh you know having really well developed and excellent kind of internal linking practices where not only are you kind of making sure that you're you know obviously internally linking to, to relevant content but actually that you're making sure that you're giving enough opportunities for your the you know the crawlers the bots to actually discover new content when it goes live so the amount of times where you know you have say you know you might be publishing say five new articles this month and you're really happy and really pleased with them but actually you forget to you know you've done all the card you know you've done all the good on, on page stuff you've got everything that you wanted but you know often when you kind of go and say well look you produce all these content but all this new content but you know, you've got no internal links that they're all kind of orphan pages or, or they're, you know, and, and I think that's the, the key there is that, well, that's how sometimes those pages and if you've, you know, produced this new stuff, that's how sometimes they can sit there and they just, they don't appear for a long time. And you're like, well, where are they? And it's because, well, actually yeah. try building some more internal links to them, you know, try to make sure that you're yeah. giving all the opportunities for the, for the, for the crawlers, for the spider, you know, the spiders, the bots to actually discover that content. Um, you know, give it as many opportunities as possible to actually get to that page to go, oh, look, we found this page. What should we do with it? You know, we should index it and then we should rank it. Right. Um, so, yeah. No, it's it's super important. And, and I think, you know, it's I was writing about like internal linking in the last last uh, screaming frog guest blog, blog that mm -hmm. we had and there's ways of obviously there's other tools that you can use but with screaming frog you can really kind of very easily see all of your they call them in links which is internal links um and there's like super nice visualizations to tell you 
Um, and it's easy, you have to keep them updated. This is the other thing, because as you produce more content, there's more opportunities for you to build your, um, your ecosystem of your internal links with those new yeah. articles. You need to kind of remember what kind of, what are the other articles that you have that are relevant and, and there's tools. I mean, there's some really good plugins, like we use the, the link whisper plugin to find yeah. opportunities. Yeah for internal linking which is great. yeah absolutely yeah can you know can really vouch for that i think you know um the, you know there's plenty out there and i know different uh seo tools but like say on wordpress websites you know there's 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 quite a few options out there but you know link whisper is a really really good option that you know that's that that makes it simple um and yeah. for managing in, internal linking and also adding new um and i think that in partnership and in kind of combination with your manual approach as well is yeah. which is why it's really important you know to stay on top of it is because you know only you know although the people that are working on the website will know you know where they will have opportunities and it's you know and it's developing this kind of this memory and of course different people have different ways of of having that that memory and, and some people have like you know processes where you know they'll have kind of complete kind of content maps of their website and they'll store it on like their their drive or wherever they store it and it will be like an actual document whereas other people that work on the site for long enough so if you've got like a long-term seo or you've got people you know it's, it's really important that you go you you have someone that goes oh actually we've got a piece of content that's based on click through yeah, yeah. rate so we can internally yeah. link to that so you know there is a there's no kind of um i'd say there's no kind of magic there in terms of like yeah. mad, you know everybody has their own way of managing that some people you know i've, I've known that are just they just remember they just remember the, what content they've got you know and they yeah. can just go oh i know i've got a piece of content whereas obviously if you're working with a bigger team you need to have more of a you know more of a process yeah. and more of a, an internal kind of uh catalog uh or archive and, of that and some people just automate the whole process which mm -hmm. i wouldn't advise by the way i mean even with like link link whisper and i can understand where it's coming from if you have like a massive website even if you have people who are working long there it's very mm. easily easy to kind of lose track um, yeah. But don't just like apply everything, even in Link Whisper, which is, you know, on a smaller scale than some of the other like automation tools out there. Um, do not just apply because it can really I mean, it can hurt your crawling rather than helping. Yeah, help I, I guess it, it's context so. like it goes into like I know obviously you can talk about, yeah. you know, internal linking could be could be its own its own. We yeah, can talk yeah, about exactly. that for, for for ages, right? But it's the context in which obviously the link is placed as well, and the you know, and the, of course, the anchor, the anchor text, text as well thing. is because that then impacts ranking, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, like you know, like because you can have. Side. Let's just say you know you've got like a travel uh, site, and you you know you're talking about Italian restaurants or something in a different post. But what about if you've got like three or four different uh, you know pieces of content that are about Italian restaurants? You might have something that's like. Oh yeah, we've got Italian restaurants that do pizza and pasta, but we've also got Italian restaurants which might be more upscale. And maybe they do kind of more, mm -hmm. you know, gourmet or more they do, you know, or whatever it might be. Yeah. And the context of that is really important because it's like, well, somebody might be, and you might be talking about, say, cheap Italian restaurants compared to, you know, the best Italian restaurants that you know are more of a, a higher price range. So if you're just letting a tool automatically link on things, sometimes you can obviously just you, you neglect the context of in which that link should actually be placed and what so if you're you know if you're linking yeah. to say cheap cheap italian restaurants and the blog post that you're linking from is like you know um you know michelin star restaurants or something like that it's kind of like well is that the right link you know from this piece and yeah. you know so the context to it and you know and all of these things so it gets very you know technical uh when, when and and you have to be really consider you know considerate and you have to really kind of think about what what links you you place and where you place them um yeah. if you've got you know similar content i guess yeah and it's kind of you know from a user perspective it's not like it's not great for bots it's not great for users you know it's it's so the other way of um a bot finding your website is um obviously your robert txt file which is the the file that basically manages your crawling and says to google whether to crawl something or not in the first mm -hmm. place um and then the other one is your sitemap so shall we talk a little bit about those yeah really yeah, important yeah. elements um so robert txt file 
if you don't know how to use it properly, just stay away from it because it can really, really damage your website. Um, so it's not for the technically, um, you know, not equipped people. So I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't like just go <clears throat> and mess with your Robert TXT file because it's the first thing that Google is going to see. Well, it's like we um, saw in, in, like we talked about briefly last in last week's video is the the issue yeah. with uh, Thornton's dot com last yeah. last week who basically disallowed um, any bots from crawling their whole site by like either a mistake or a purposeful thing. But either way, it has now been fixed. Um, so it'll yeah, be interesting to see how their site recovers, but it looks like, you know, that, that was, you know, something that can, that, you know, that's a good example of what can happen with crawling. Mm -hmm. And if you mess around with, you know, the, the robots, uh, .txt file, um, so yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, um, it's one of the things that happens a lot in migration. Um, you know, you, you kind of, uh, disallow it there, uh, while you're, um, in production and then you forget to take it off. Um, so don't mess with it if you don't know what you're doing. If you do know what you're doing, one of the things to kind of remember again is don't like necessarily use it to, um, you know, like put things in because you think that you're at your crawling budget. Crawling, I mean, I'm not quite, there is a thing called crawling budget, so I shouldn't be doing this, but, um, you know, don't use it to just like temporarily manage your crawling budget. It should be only used if you really don't want bots to crawl a particular mm -hmm. section of your website. But also um, certain bots as well. You can manage which certain yeah. bots can are allowed to crawl your site. So, yeah, exactly. you know, for example, if you don't want like, um, I believe oh, that there's a good one is that recently um, I've yeah. seen quite a few people starting to uh, disallow SEMrush and Ahrefs bots from crawling their sites. And another good example is people, uh, dis, uh, you know, disallowing, uh, some of the AI like uh, chat GPT and things from crawling their sites. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so you can use it to manage obviously which bots are allowed to crawl your site as well. Yeah, exactly. But you should always like consider, you know, I, I always say if you're messing with your robot TXT uh, file, consider all the possibilities. <laughs> Don't. Yeah. That's like one of the, one of the very rare elements where I'm like, okay, right. This needs to be really, 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 there's no like, it, it can go really badly wrong. The mm. other thing is, and that is important as well, is kind of putting your link to your sitemap inside your Robert TXT file, because mm -hmm. that's the other way uh, that uh, Google discovers um, discovers your website. Now, there's been kind of back and forth whether how important that is. I mean, you can um, really submit your submit your sitemap through uh, Google Search Console, which you should be doing. But in my mind, how I understand it, the robot TXT file is the first thing that, that Google is going to check. Um, so it's a very nice way of kind of, you know, directing them to your sitemap um, at the first point of entrance. I mean, I don't have, maybe it's not how it works, but in my head, that's how I explain it to myself. And I think it, mm. it's quite important to have it in there. And obviously sitemap for crawling, definitely important. Exactly that. Yeah. I think that's, that wraps up crawling pretty well, to be honest. And, um, even though it is technical, I would, I would say, yeah, it's, 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 fun, it's maybe, it? it's maybe like a little bit harsh of me to call it boring because it, it isn't boring, but, uh, it's super but yeah, important. I think that's I mean, often, like... it's often why I think some people kind of maybe, you know, shy away from it a little bit is because yeah, it's, you know, it is quite technical and it's something that's just a bit, you know, hard to kind of grasp sometimes, you know, because it's, you know, you, it's, it's things that you can't see and the things that you can't really, you know, um, but you, know. you can also see it. This is the other thing. One of the things, one of the kind of the tips is if you're not like, I mean, I would, I would imagine that every SEO should know this, but I've had experiences where people have worked in SEO for in agencies in particular, and they don't know how to use Google search console. Uh, but in Google search console, there is an amazing report, your crawl report that is hit, hidden in your settings. Mm. If you click on there, you can very easily see a very amazing snapshot of your crawling stats. And it shows you things like, so one of the things to look out for is the type of files that Google is crawling. 
it's brilliant for like troubleshooting any JavaScript. If you see that most of your files are JavaScript, you want to check some of these things out. I mean, I could like, we could go into JavaScript for crawling. It can be, <laughs> you know, like for actually for, for rendering the page, it can, it can be, that's, that's probably a lot of the time when you look at the discovered, not indexed pages, JavaScript is one of the culprits there. Uh, can be yeah. one of the culprits there yeah. because you have you might have a bot and it's the same with like soft 404s mm -hmm. where you have a bot that has crawled your page but because most of your page is in javascript it's not seeing anything on that first, yeah. Yeah. first scroll so it has to render the whole page on the second one um you know a second visit it renders the page and then it might see it but by then you know you've kind of wasted wasted your crawl yeah i mean not wasted you're probably under your budget anyway so <laughs> right room 404 <laughs> um I, well i don't have, actually have any candidates this week other than potentially uh google's new deal with uh reddit, <gasps> reddit uh, yes but yeah yeah I, I just yeah i don't i don't know really other than other than that i think that's you know a cause for concern, um, considering obviously what's been what's gone gone on on this week in in the SEO Not kind of news. Not surprising though. Not surprising though. We were waiting for something like this to happen, considering where things have been going. With yeah, search. well, I think you know this. Uh, I think yeah, the other candidate is for me this week is is that like you know I I kind of I'm a bit worried um, in how. Currently, with obviously the the search engine results page, the SERPs, you know, are are looking. Um, I'm a bit worried about you know how a lot of people are producing really good content, but they're not being rewarded with that. And I think Google's in a really tricky place at the moment um, in terms of actually you know dealing with AI content, in terms of dealing with how it actually still rewards good content. Um, yeah, I think easy. it's driving more and more people into kind of black hat tactics um i think it's driving more and more people into because people are just not getting the results through effort and hard work um the has is it the has is it has fresh the has fresh article this week um that came out where they were obviously criticizing this this kind of you know um situation in in the serps where you know these large sites are basically yeah, being the smaller news publishers are being like penalized basically penalized yeah. yeah in favor of large sites who can just produce any old mm. rubbish and they can rank high and during the whole week once that article came out is that it was obviously criticizing reddit ranking at number one um from like you know like reddit a, a, an article from like 2014 or something from on reddit but and and what's happened is that the actual article is has obviously just been outranked itself so it's like you know a, a it, what it happened you know it happened to the article itself what they were complaining what they were complaining about happened to the article itself um yeah. so it's, it's it's a good analysis it's a really like if anybody hasn't read it it's a really good analysis of what's going on so the editor really went in gave some examples i mean there are some you know they also do seo and i don't think it was, you know, I saw on LinkedIn some people saying, well, if you are going to be attacking uh, the people who you, you have to be honest that you also do SEOs, there's articles and you're like, I don't think that was the purpose of the article. I think yeah. it was Google and the fact that they're still in this like period <clears throat> of, OK, we need to figure out what's going on here because but it's understandable. It's understandable. All of it. Yeah, but I think this that's I think that's the key thing is that, you know, Google with its kind of, you know, there's like a, you know, there's like a do no evil attitude at Google. Right. Um, where you, you know, you, I think they changed that. I think they've they've changed that. Didn't yeah, they but change but that? but still, right? Is that you know that they they have that kind of like you know look yeah. you know if you if you do if you create great content you'll be rewarded in the long term you know don't do you know yeah. but actually the truth is and I think that veil is kind of slipping a bit is that well you're driving like they're driving more people to to kind of go well look you know what I I'm I'm doing these things that you're saying but I'm not you know. And I think that's yeah. where the frustration lies, is that people oh, are saying, definitely. I'm doing these things, I'm doing it the way, I'm following the guidelines, I'm, you know, but, but I'm not getting rewarded. Um, and I think it's driving, and, it, and I think, 
you know they will drive more and more people towards you know uh black hat, yeah. black hat spammy tactics whatever it might be which obviously just makes things even worse so it's like i think we're in a bit of a spiral at the moment that something needs to, to happen that you know uh, because or, or it's like the beginning of like you know the downfall i think with with google having like really poor quality results so i don't so, think yeah. it is it's just being patient uh which i i you know i'm mindful that not everybody can be patient the patient you have people who are being paid for results that are not getting results at the moment and they yeah but you like know that's be, it businesses yeah. that need to get results businesses that need to obviously yeah. make money and stakeholders that yeah, you know are involved exactly. in that and it, and it all has a has a, has a big effect and I think it's why obviously there's been like a big push away from uh, people just relying on Google traffic and, and people are really mm. diversifying how they drive uh, traffic to their website with different channels, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, room 404, I would say um, just read it really at the top of Google search results. That's what I would say. <laughs> um, no, more specifically outdated old Reddit information that outranks current helpful content there you go it's yeah but we've mouthful. kind of switched we've switched it seems like we have like two things this this week in the 404 room one of them is this reddit articles you know reddit posts and the other one is the potential uh can of worms that is the new google reddit deal yeah which that's, is a yeah. bit yeah. i'm not it just yeah it doesn't it You've doesn't sit your right mind. it doesn't sit <laughs> yeah. right with me it doesn't i don't i don't you know <laughs> It doesn't sit right with me because it's, you know, because they, these, yeah, these partnerships and, 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 and things, you know, I think it's only, it's favorable, right? So it's like Reddit's favorable uh, to Google. So it's like, you know, and that's, that's where you can, interest. yeah, it just becomes like, you know, it comes a situation where it's like, well, okay, now we understand why Reddit's ranking so high. I, I'm um, more concerned about like the the you know the 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 not copyright but you know this idea of like what that means for like la large language models and and yeah. uh, Gemini in particular and all of that. So for me, but, that that partnership is more more yeah, well, like I'm, red I'm more flags on that you know, side. There's a lot of rubbish on Reddit as well. Like yeah, there's some some really good advice and there's some there's exactly. some really good stuff. Exactly, this is what but, I mean. Like, what? Two percent, maybe two percent of content. Maybe yeah. I don't even know how much uh, is actually. You, you know. Do you really? I mean, <laughs> like seriously, L LMs uh, learn from the internet anyway, and we've spoken about this um, before. Uh, but like Reddit, it's the recess of you know, it's like a dark pit of questionable opinions. So yeah, it, yeah, anyway, yeah. Well, I've any, got for, my popcorn any forum, out. any forum is, yeah. you know, any forum is. It's like, yeah, you get, you get some, re you get a, like an upvoted, top voted answer or it's recommended yeah. answer. It's like, yeah, that guy gave a good answer and it's said it's sorted. But then you scroll down through an endless stream of people's opinions, which probably yeah. shouldn't have seen the light of day, um, uh, you know, and, and they probably should have kept it to themselves. <laughs> so but yeah, yeah anyway exactly. it'll be great to talk this week um tune in next week we'll have another conversation if you haven't um listened to some of the previous episodes as well uh please do um and yeah we will see you next week for another episode of seos getting coffee please join the discussion we'd love to hear from you um ask us any questions that you might have and uh yeah we'll see you next week thanks amina see you next week see you later Bye bye bye